If you knew what I knew, you could get 10 million subscribers within six months. Your first video is not going to get views. Subscribers don't matter. Views don't matter. I mean, they do. So stop sitting there and thinking for months and months on end and just get to work and start uploading. Everything you want as a creator comes from making the best videos possible and thumbnails. Mr. B shares his best YouTube advice all the way from title and thumbnail secrets to growing a channel on YouTube. It's much easier to get 5 million views on one video than 50,000 views on 100 videos. He also reveals how he's able to hook in viewers in his videos and what he would do if he started over from scratch. What advice would you give yourself when you were starting out? Your videos suck. You think your videos are good, but they suck. <laughs> you know, they just do. Um, and the sooner you learn how to make good, great videos that people actually want to watch, the sooner you'll get views. Um, I think is the biggest takeaway. Cause like when I was 14, I thought my videos were the best in the world. They weren't, they were terrible. Many people are making way better videos than me, but I didn't think that. And I think, you know, to be successful, you kind of have, a, have to have a little bit of that ego where you're like, you know, my content's great and you got to believe in it. But also like, if you have sub a thousand subscribers, like there's a good probability your videos just suck. They just do. And you need to make hundreds of videos or a hundred videos. I don't know. It depends on the difficulty of your videos. Improve something every time and just like get to the point where they don't. When you make, good content you'll blow up it's you, it's not the algorithm it's not anything it's just like most me and most people who are in my position you just make terrible videos and that's that's okay because you got to make a bunch of videos and improve over time to be great like you don't just pick up a baseball and become an mlb level uh, athlete within a year you know it takes many 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 years and youtube's kind of the same way a lot of people get analysis paralysis and they'll just sit there and they'll plan their first video for three months and yeah I, i'm any of you listening, if, if you, especially if you have zero videos on your channel, your first video is not going to get views, period. It's not. Your first 10 are not going to get views. I can very confidently say that. So stop sitting there and thinking for months yeah. and months on end and just get to work and start uploading. Like all you need to do, this, this applies to people who have not uploaded videos, but have dreams of being a YouTuber, is make 100 videos and improve something every time. Do that. And then on your 101st video, we'll start talking. Like maybe you can get some views, but... You know, your first hundred are going to stop. There are very freak cases like Liza Koshi or Emma Chamberlain who have really good personalities and it doesn't take them so as many videos. And it's just like people who are seven foot five and making the NBA. Like, yes, there are freak cases you can find. But for the average person like us, you know, who don't have these exceptional personalities and, you know, backgrounds in filmmaking, just make a hundred videos, improve something each time, and then talk to me on your hundred first video. How do you improve something each time? The second one just... I don't know, put more effort into the script. The third one, try to learn a new editing trick. The fourth one, try to figure out a way that you can have better inflections in your voice. The fifth one, try to, you know, study a new thumbnail tip and implement it. The sixth one, try to figure out a new title. There's yeah. infinite ways. That's the beauty of content creation online. There's literally infinite ways from the coloring to the frame rate, to the editing, to the filming, to the production, to the jokes, to the pacing, to every little thing can be improved and they can never not be improved. There's no, there's literally no such thing as a perfect video. What YouTube wants is they want people to click on a video and they want to watch it. Like, at its core that's what it is now you can like draw little lines and go as deep as you want into how to get people to click and how to get people to watch i mean essentially by studying the algorithm you'll learn that you're more studying human psychology right what do humans want to watch you anytime you say the word algorithm just replace it with audience and it works perfectly like the algorithm didn't like that video no the audience didn't like that video literally that's it if people are clicking and watching then it gets promoted more and that's literally all the algorithm does is reflect what the people want to a t and if you deny that you just make terrible videos and are trying to find a scapegoat what, what makes for a good title short not just short it's also if someone reads it are they like do they have to watch it is it just so intrinsically interesting that it's just gonna quit them yeah. if they don't click on it you know what i mean ideally it's a title also that you know because the titles don't live in a vacuum right so it has to lead into the content so ideally the title represents content that you would want to watch for 20 minutes so if it's a 20 minute video and the title is i stepped on a bug the click through rate is going to be much lower than if it was like a five second video like even nuances of the length of the video based against the title will affect whether people want to click it because sometimes they just all add up i mean it's that yes ideally you want it below 50 characters because above 50 characters on certain devices you run the chance of it going dot 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 so like i took a, a light pole and i saw how many dollar bills i could stack on top and they would just go dot, 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 because it's yeah. too long and it can't finish it. And that's the worst thing because then people don't even know what they're clicking on. And so it's going to do even worse. Short, simple, ideally, and just so freaking interesting. They have to click and it is a good segue into the content and it represents the length of the content. The more extreme the opinion, typically the higher the click through rate. If you can like 
pay it off in the content, then it just supercharges it. So like, oh, so you have a kind of estimate of the extreme. Yeah, like uh, this, this water, right? You're like, Fiji water sucks. Yeah, that would do fine. But if you said Fiji water is the worst water I've ever drank in my life, yeah, way more extreme opinion would do way better. But you have to deliver. Yeah, but then you have to deliver because the more extreme you are, the more extreme you have to be in the video. I heard you guys talking about um, autoplay on YouTube, yes. and I've never considered it. I've always thought about the thumbnail, but now on YouTube, videos automatically play. Of awesome. course. So before you do, you film a video, what is the thumbnail? What is the video? And then what's the first five seconds? And then what's the first 30 seconds? You know, by the first yeah. five seconds, it's like goes with the thumbnail. Because it's possible that people open YouTube and they, they don't, don't see it. They don't Especially see for thumbnail. us, because like for so many people I've watched hundreds of our videos when I upload, I am first on your homepage. So like you, you just literally don't even see the thumbnail because mm. wow. it auto plays so quickly. So it, like the thumbnail is irrelevant. I have to like visually convince you to click on the video. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, that's why we go so hardcore. Mm. Dude, that's so crazy. So do you consider also captions in those first five seconds? Because people course, aren't watching with yeah, audio. Everything, mm -hmm. yeah. everything, yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Wow, so those first five seconds, that hook is now even more important than it ever used to be. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before it was important because you had to convince people to watch. Yeah. Now you have to convince people to click and watch at the same time. Whoa. With the first five seconds. So that's driving CTR now too. Yeah. It Interesting. One hundred percent. I bro, I roast that a lot of people who like have boring first five seconds. It's brutal. Your title and thumbnail set expectations. And at the very beginning of the video to minimize drop off, you want to assure them that those expectations are being met. If you click on a video where, you know, uh, of his where it's like tether is a scam, and then at the very beginning he starts talking about literally anything else, then you are like, Oh, this is bull this isn't what I clicked on. But if at the very start of the video you go Tether is a scam, and I'm gonna teach you why. Then it's like, okay, you match the expectations. So at the very beginning, match the expectations, and then you wanna exceed them. So you wanna assure people that what they clicked on is what they're getting, and then blow their mind and be like, but you're also getting even more. That's how you, you lower drop off, which a lot of people, sometimes it takes them like 20 seconds to really meet the expectations. And so you lose, like, that's where you're gonna lose everyone. Everyone's videos start like this, and then it levels off. So you want to reduce the amount of people that click off on the audience retention graph. I hope you're popping up graphs while I'm saying this so, so it's easier for people to visualize. We really should drill this home because like the number one thing is like retaining as many people as possible at the start. Because like envision a chart where you lose 35% of your viewers in the first 30 seconds and then envision one where you only lose 20%. That's 15% more people that are watching, you know, throughout the video than not. And it's not like you made the whole video like, uh, a bunch better you just had a more strategic intro that hooked them and I'm, I'm struggling to put this into words and like to really impose how important that is but like that 15 percent difference in viewership really does make the difference between hypothetically like 2 million views on a video and like 10 in my head the thing people undervalue the most is literally the first 10 seconds of the video like yeah i can almost i think i can quote it uh i tied up an fbi agent and i have a hundred thousand dollars in this bag here's a knife Good luck, and I just run away. Yeah. Like it gives you everything you need. Yeah. No wasted words. Short, concise, and then tension. You basically want to remove every dull moment. You probably want to find the ten most critical people you know, make them watch the video, and just roast it. You know, certain things like if I just talk to a camera for ten seconds without a cut, like a lot of people will just like get bored or they'll lose interest. So like having a B cam and a C cam, and just you can just talk for ten seconds, but three seconds in cutting to a B cam and then a C cam. Like now it's more interesting, even though it's essentially the same thing and not that crazy. But you want to have good pacing, typically having a payoff at the end keeps some, right? Last leave circle wins 10 grand. If there is a low moment halfway through, you're going to watch to the end because you want to see who wins the 10 grand. Um, so having a good payoff at the end. How do you keep viewers watching and, you know, happy with the video? I would say just give them why they clicked, tell them why they should watch and then just stick on topic like that right there isn't even super complex but i would already put you in the upper echelon of youtube <laughs> uh it's it's hard for a lot of people people for whatever reason like they just drag it out a lot of vlog channels do it it's like eating a hundred dollar ice cream and they'll be like i'm gonna eat a hundred dollar ice cream but first and then it's like earlier in the day and it's just stuff that has nothing to do with what you clicked on it's like them birthday shopping for their mom and it's like, that's that's not why I came here. If you're looking to grow your YouTube channel, I gotta tell you about this before we get into the rest of Mr. Beast genius advice. And that is that we at Think Media are doing a free YouTube challenge to help you grow your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube or make your first $1,000 on YouTube. To sign up for free, all you have to do is go to tube1kchallenge.com or check out the link down in our description. During this free challenge, Sean Cannell, the founder of Think Media, is gonna be showing you guys how to 
grow your YouTube channels and make money online with YouTube. So click on the link to sign up today or to check out when our next challenge is gonna be. Okay, let's get back into the video. What's interesting is the longer people watch something, the more likely they are to keep watching. So you don't have to try as hard in the hypothetically back half of a video as you do in the front. Like even right now, we're so deep into this where a lot of people listening are probably just gonna keep listening relatively close to the end unless we just have a really boring part of this conversation because they're just they're just in it, they're, they're immersed. Um, and so a big, like to really boil it down to a simple level, you just wanna get people where they're immersed in the content and then just kind of hold them there. The thing is, it's all knowledge, it really is. And like, every time I say this, people debate it to the end of time on Twitter, but I don't care. Like I could start a new channel tomorrow with not using my face or my voice, like without ever promoting it and in six months have 20 million subscribers. I just could, yeah. it's purely knowledge. Like yeah. if you knew what I knew, you could get 10 yeah. million views a video yeah. and you could get 10 million subscribers no matter where you are right now within six months. It, it really is just knowledge. And yeah. I, I can already tell you 90% of the people watching, they don't, they don't agree with that. They yeah. don't. And everyone has excuses and they're always like, nah, YouTube yeah. just doesn't work like that, Jimmy. You don't understand. But I, I yeah. mentor a lot of people. I see it even to this day. I still see it all the time. Uh, it is possible. It is simply knowledge. And the second you accept that it is knowledge and you start your, for me, 10,000 day journey of learning for you, whatever it is, yeah. if you want to be less hardcore, but, and like actually figuring out, you know, what makes a good video? What does yeah. my audience want? How can I elevate? And then you take that knowledge and you just, you just assume that I will never understand what the perfect video is. And every single day, I just need to be devoted to learning as much as possible and improving as much as possible. And I got to prove every video as much as I can. Then there you go. There are tons of viral ideas that people can do that don't require money. It does not require money to go viral. Like at one point, one of my most few videos was like spending um, 24 hours in a desert. We just grabbed a tent and some stuff and we went in the desert it, and it got like 60, 70 million views. I have so many videos where we spent hardly any money, like the uh, no food one, or uh, I'd have to pull up the channel and go through it, that have gotten tens of millions of views and they would have gotten 10 plus million views even on a small channel. So people who say, oh, well, I could be Mr. Beast if I had money. Well, A, I didn't start off with money. I was poor, I had no money, and it took me like seven years just to buy a camera, saving up from YouTube. And B, some of our most few videos, literally, like anyone could do. The best way to get views, in my opinion, I think it's better to really, really focus on quality if you're a very small YouTuber. And you can upload a video a day and like all the videos be average. And like none of those videos will really stand out. None of it's like epic enough where like the algorithm's gonna go, oh, this video, like this video is good. Like we need to spread it. I feel like a lot of small YouTubers, they just post like videos that aren't bad, but they're not great. And they just do that. And, and none of them ever pop off. So they never get an audience where it might be better to like, you know, upload half or a third or even like a fifth of the videos, but make the videos you upload so freaking good that like the algorithm has to promote it and that, you know, it has to find audiences for it because it's such an interesting and good video. When you like set a consistent schedule and you're constantly having to upload videos that aren't as good as you'd like because you got to hit, oh, this Monday, I said I'd upload every Monday, you know, like, that's a dangerous trap because then, you know, the viewers notice that the quality isn't as good and it makes them less likely to watch. And I think it hurts your longevity. A lot of times people, oh boy, it's like they think their videos are better than they are, honestly. And they- Tell I them, just, Jimmy, tell them. I mean, they do. And, and you have to like, you have to, that and they have horrible friend groups because you really are like the type of YouTubers you hang around. And so like a lot of times I'm just like, what you're saying is wrong. Who told you this? And they're like, oh, this guy, this guy. And it's like, well, they're wrong. <laughs> it's not true. You, there's no such thing as a perfect video. Like someone should always call you and shit on your video because it could be better. Like that's, because imagine if someone does it every video and you upload hundreds, if not a thousand videos over the next 10 years. And every single time someone's critiquing you and you're applying what they're critiquing. Like imagine the compound yeah. effect over that time span. It's, it's invaluable. People think it's like, oh, well, um, it's all like CTR and stuff like that. But a big thing that everyone underestimates is it's what, what was your experience with your last video? If people loved your, the last video of yours that they watched, they're more likely to watch your next one. But the YouTubers watch this, when people watch your video, they go, okay, that was good, but like, that's enough of, of you for the day. Like it was, it was all right, right? Whereas what you want is them to go, holy crap, that was crazy. Oh my God, what's that? Holy crap, that was crazy. Oh my God. And they just, and they watched 10 videos. That's what you're going for that data can't describe. And like, I don't, I've never heard anyone talk about that, but that, that is it. That's how you get, 
these high view counts because people watch 10 videos, not one, you know? It's okay to draw inspiration for me, but just don't do what I do to a T. It's not like yeah. $1 versus blank. Yeah. I'm the first person to do it. But I just, you know, saw that format and I was just like, how can I do that a hundred times better? Right. How can I put a hundred times more creativity into it? How can I level up the editing by a hundred times? How can I spend a hundred, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that's always my mindset. How can I like, if I get inspired by something, how can I do that but a hundred times better and make it my own? Whereas a lot of people are just like, oh, Mr. Beast did that. I'm just gonna yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, how do I make a good thumbnail? How do I get people to click my video? You want it to be simple. You want them to be able to like, when they're scrolling through their suggested or homepage or whatever touch point, you want them to instantly be able to understand what you're conveying. And, and you want them to feel some type of emotion. You know what I mean? The way I like to phrase it is you wanna make it so interesting or, or spike their curiosity or whatever emotion so much that like, if they don't click it, they'll wonder, you know, when they're, before they go to bed, like what happened? You know what I mean? Like, like an example would be like, if you uploaded a video, I rode a skateboard with 1000 other people on it. And like people are falling off the side or whatever. And I'm envisioning like a giant skateboard and people like hanging on the side of it. Um, maybe it's like about to go off a big ramp. If you don't click that, you're gonna like, be so curious. It's gonna be on your mind, you know? Later in the day when you're daydreaming, you're gonna think like, huh, what happened? <laughs> what happened to those thousand people on that skateboard? That's kind of the mindset I think you should have when making thumbnails. How often do you change a thumbnail on a, on a video? Is that something, do you usually um, just stick with one or you try well, different so ones? Well, I think <laughs> we, we get better at making thumbnails every year. So it's more, when I upload a thumbnail, I usually think it's good and I don't change it most of the time. But what happens is like three years later, I look back and I'm like, oh, that's a horrible thumbnail. And so it's usually like every two years we just go back and update a lot of our older thumbnails just because they're terrible. Um, just with like the new knowledge we have and what we've learned. And funny enough, that actually usually does help quite a bit when we update the thumbnails on old videos. That they usually do see a little bit of an uptick because they're just, you know, if we take an old thumbnail where it's like uh, seeing if whatever, like a uh, thousand, a hundred thousand magnets can stop a car and it just looks terrible. And then with the new stuff, I know we zoom in a little bit so it's a little more visible and make things look better. Then magically it starts doing a little bit better because now people actually understand what it is because I'm not as uh, much of an idiot anymore. In 10 years, YouTube's gonna be bigger than television ever was for culture in America, at least in my opinion. And so I think a lot of people underestimate that and people, I don't think people really understand just how like to be a, one of the top creators on the biggest social media platform and that and that will also be the biggest in 10 years during that whole time like the amount of value and how crazy that is like you don't need a network you don't need um you know to go through people you just are you can and you can do whatever you want and you can influence people how you want it's just wild it's mind-blowing and you can leverage that to build businesses or you know like do things like beast philanthropy or whatever i think like people don't realize just how much influence the top YouTube channels have. No one's ever gonna do what I do better than me. Like, it's yeah. just not, it's not even humanly possible. Like, I reinvest every penny I make. Yeah. I work every hour I'm awake. I devote every atom in my brain to solving this. I hire yeah. the best people on the planet. I've been doing this for 14 years. And I think in decades, not years. So I'm gonna be doing this for another 20, 30 years, not two or three. So. Right. No, the next me isn't going to be me because no one's going to do what I do better than me. It's not possible. If I thought someone was doing better than me, I'd just start sleeping less so I could work even more. Like I'd figure it out. I don't <laughs> well, see, the barrier to entry to be you is extremely high. Yeah. yeah. Right. Especially where you're well, at Well, it's just because I'm all in. I'm crazy. Like yeah. people shouldn't be me. I don't, right. I don't have a life. I don't have work life balance. I, my personality, my soul, my being is making the best videos possible, entertaining right. my fans as best as I can. Like that is what exists on this planet. And I don't recommend it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you should have work life balance. You should not devote your entire life to this one thing. Like, yeah. go have fun. Like, you know, I'm miserable a lot of times. <laughs> I, I, I have a mental breakdown every other week because I push myself so hard. Like, I don't recommend it, you know? What do you think gets us to a million subscribers? Well, subscribers is an arbitrary okay, number. Okay, so that, million, that million views of no, video. No, you should yeah. ask me, what helps us make the best videos possible? That's okay. the only question you, you should ask me. Subscribers don't matter, views don't matter. I mean, they do, yeah. but all that comes. Everything you want as a creator comes from making the best videos possible and thumbnails uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's easier to you know make thumbnails the video parts the hard part and that's yeah. the thing that you're known for ask how can i make my videos better do that every single day for years and then you'll probably get views